Hello and welcome to this video everyone. Um, we'll call this series Carchaeology. I guess this is taking a look at little things and just general things within UK sort of car culture, things you might have seen, smelled in this case, or done that are significant to you. Or for in this case, it's me. If you have any cool air fresheners that you find nostalgic, let me know in the comments drop a comment i read every single one so let's get to it obviously these are going to be the ones that are significant to me and me alone we have the, obviously the main event which is this few orange thing a few orange the orange i can't remember but i'll be basically going through these air fresheners and giving you little stories about each one which you might find boring you might find incredibly cool so drop yours in the comments as well and let's get to it so the first one we have was when I was a very young boy, this few orange thing. Now, this was originally made by, I think it was Polco up until 2000, and then it was licensed by Pennzoil past the 2000. I think it hasn't been produced since about 2005. There are some copies out there, but nothing really does compare to the original thing. The ones that my friend's dad had were the big packet ones, which were from the 90s. They were some really old stock things. I think he got them from a cash and carry or something, but this is more with the time period of obviously when I was younger, because I'm, what, 20 something? So these are fairly complicated for air fresheners as well. So the middle part is the actual air freshener piece, I assume. So let's get to actually unboxing this and taking a look. So there's the directions. One, first month after removing from the display card, use the pin to, okay, so it's got two holes that we need to puncture. Okay, and as you can see, it is made by Penazoil in Spain. So let's get this open. This cost me 20 quid. This cost me 20 pounds. So let's see how it goes. See, I can remember from the days um, in the estate, so more specifically Merlin Road in Scunthorpe, um, there's little bits of metal in there. I assume it's from the chain. Um, and in Scunthorpe, this was obviously hanging on his, um, his mirror <coughs> in his Cavalier, and it was incredibly cool. I used to think it was drugs. Don't know why, just me being a stupid child, <laughs> I guess. But I assume then you take this pin out of the top, it's literally just a little pin and then you pierce the top hole which i'll get your clothes up of so you get that and then you pierce this top hole this is the first month so okay we'll do that a few times right so then we have to obviously return the pin to the top if I can actually do it there we go and then there we go so basically I assume then we've basically punctured the first part of this it doesn't really smell as much as I remember hmm It does smell like an old car though. This does smell like that Cavalier. That is, that brings it back. Especially the council garage. Brown door, brown um, brown garage door. Absolutely brilliant. I love that little chain as well. Look at that. That's, that just is, is pure quality. Of course, I don't know how much these cost new. You. They must have been a decent amount, I guess. Or could be a fairly normal amount. I imagine the same price as the weird link stuff we have now, so. God, these smell. It smells a little bit orangey, but it smells slightly musty. I can't just, you, the problem is with car air fresheners is you cannot describe the smells of half of them. But the place I would put this, and it will be going, it will be going in this car, is I would probably see if I can locate it somewhere near here because I kind of like having air fresheners hanging down here. That's sort of the cool thing we used to do when we were when we just passed, we'd whack the air freshener on the thing so you couldn't see it. Or we would do another thing, which I'm gonna to get to later, which is quite ridiculous, but it was a big it was a big thing back in 2015 when I first passed. So this is a bit underwhelming actually. I must have not pierced the hole right because it's got 
I mean, I could always play the full thing, but yeah, weird. Hmm. I wouldn't say that's worth 20 quid to me, but we'll see anyway. We're going to try a few more things with this. But anyway, we need to move on to the next air freshener, which is from the Vauxhall ad campaign. Now, I can remember seeing this um, on the way to school all the time. There was this one musty Corsa. Well, not musty at the time, but it did look a bit musty. It is just a standard looking air freshener. You can see it. I'll try and include a clip of the advert as well. But you basically get this if you bought, bought a Vauxhall Corsa or if you got some of the promotional materials or something. It was like this weird, weird character. This was what the 2000s were like. Walkman's weird stuff. Obviously, this hasn't ever been opened, so it's just your standard air freshener. You can see, you see the Vauxhall stuff on the back, official licensed product, blah, blah, blah. Obviously, I don't understand that. But, yeah, they basically had these little characters. I think there was two or three. Obviously, I think this was the most popular one. So, well, it smells like... That smells like trash. Wow. It's car... It's just one of your standard dipped cardboard things, I guess. That is so early 2000s. Wonder if there's any crazy frog air fresheners. I did accidentally almost buy a Looney Tunes air freshener, but it just smells like bubble gum, you know, because it's supposed to smell crazy, of course. It's just your bog standard air freshener. But yeah, I used to see that all the time on the way to school. Funny seeing a course on the way to school. Um, yeah, I used to do that all the time on the way to school. And I used to, I used to hate these characters. It was a, because Crazy Frog sort of went as well. Speaking of the early 2000s, you had Crazy Frog, which was epic and so cool, and Harry the Hamster and stuff on your, on your Sony Ericsson, and that was amazingly cool and amazingly funny. And then it just got to the point where it was just cringe. So you'd hear this stuff all the time, and everything was merchandised with um, Crazy Frog. And just, it just got far too much. So we're on to another one of these. And these are more, these are more sort of, well, this one isn't. Cause I, I, I did go that trend, but there was um, a few people that went a bit too far. So this is one of these weird Hawaiian, um, you know, these, these, these flower necklace things. And basically people used to put them, people used to put them on on their mirror obviously there was some bigger ones than this and they used to have them hanging like this now i'll see if i can grab some pictures but basically the the thing is i had a little red one because i had a red car and mine used to hang there like obviously like like that but behind the mirror obviously and then people started to get ridiculous so you used to ha literally have like a full reef people were putting like um People were, it was getting to the point where you may as well have had a hanging basket under your wing mirror. It was that stupid. It was, it was so funny. You'd see them all at the car meet. It was always a polo because you can never trust a polo driver. You'd always have a massive, massive reef around there. There was less, the, I've seen less flowers at a funeral and at a wedding than there was on a, a Volkswagen Polo's um, rear view mirror in the early, two th in the, um, early 2010s i think it was it was about 2015 to 2017 that little trend lasted there's a few hangers on but yeah if you're still doing that i guess each each your own each your own i wouldn't do it again i never got big we we had one guy in college that had this huge thing it was like a wreath it was just it was just magic it was magic that smells trash by the way um next one this yankee candle air freshener now this one is we're getting a bit personal to me now. So what my Fiat Punto T-Jet, I used to always call it by its full name, by the way. As we do with all first cars, we exaggerate. So it was a Fiat Grand Punto T-Jet 120 Sporting. That was its full name. So we had, um, I had these in my in my vents. They're, they're quite, um, they're quite pungent for like the first five minutes when you turn the, the um, when you turn your, your vents on. And then after that, it's just a bit of a mess, really. It doesn't really smell that much. I used to take them out and just used to smell them just to get my money's worth. We'd be sat in McDonald's car park and I'd be sniffing these air fresheners. But simple, simple stuff, really. You just get them, whack them in your vents, turn your vent on, 
you your air on, it blasts all the stuff at you and it smells like this for five minutes. Obviously this would then wear down, but yeah, I can remember um, way back when, when I, was, when I was 18, obviously I'd just passed and I was driving like a lunatic. It was so funny because you'd be um, you'd be in um, you'd be sat around in a car park and everyone else would have these really cool air fresheners out. You'd have um, people would have what the, what do you call them? The, is it the jelly bean ones? It's called like it's not jelly belly, is it? I'm thinking that video off Facebook. Um, it's like a jelly bean air freshener. Everyone had them. A friend of mine at the time was collecting those air fresheners as well. He had tons, and there was this one guy. He was king of Morrison's. He had like about about twenty all the different ones some he had twice of course because there isn't 20 different scents but yeah that was wicked but i can remember we we used to go over and explore and so we'd be in like i don't know like camelot theme park way back when when it was in its heyday or um saint john's asylum in lincoln when it was in its heyday and then of urban exploring i mean not its heyday of being an asylum that would be a bit a bit questionable for me to be there then but we used to go to all these places and the one comfort, the thing I loved, was when we'd get into my car at, at one o'clock in the morning or 12 o'clock at night, I'd turn my vents on because I had dual zone climate control and it was better than my friend Saxo at the time because that just, he used to just turn that on and it smelled like, you know, it's cheap air freshness that you get from the, um, whatchamacallit, the, oh, what's it, the car washes, those car washes where they, they do your car for a fire and, and sand it down, basically scratch all your paint off. Yeah, he used to have them. He used to stink. I used to hate his car every time we went in that. But when we used to get in my car, we used to have our lovely Yankee candles and you'd turn it on first thing, that because that punter is really weird, the, the air conditioner would blast up and then go down straight away because obviously it was climate control, so it was trying to get the temperature. And you have this wonderful Yankee candle. I think it was midnight. It was like black midnight, something like that, or I'd have the cherry one because my car was red. Um, and yeah, you <laughs> You would, you would have this wonderful smell and that's the one thing I would look forward to is you'd come out of a musty place like like Camelot, Kestevan, um, St. John's, I, I, I can't even remember after these, you know all these places and you'd have that wonderful Yankee Candle smell. It was, it was amazing, it was so comforting, so comforting to know you came back to this. So this is easily one of my favourite air fresheners, even though it doesn't last five minutes. So that's that one. Now, this is obviously the final air freshener. This is a Little Tree's Black Ice. Now, with this one, my main memory of this was when I used to own a business when I was about 18, up until I was about 21, 22. Yeah, 22. So, I used to own a business with um, repairing old computers, old Macintoshes. So, you'd have a Macintosh Plus, a Macintosh SE, etc., etc. And I used to own a business doing that. Now, I wanted to be taken very seriously because I was a young businessman at the time, of course. So I bought myself the big boy scent, which is this black ice, of course. I wanted to be taken extremely seriously by everybody that I came into contact with, especially if they sat in my car. So the big boy for, um, scent, I had my All Saints coat, I had my Mercedes A-Class, AMG line, A180D, whatever it was, and I had this. This was the smell of the serious man. I've never I, I even even got to the point where I used to put it in my in my pocket so it would smell I used to think these were deadly serious. They just smell it I can't remember what it smells like actually. Let's let's take a let's take a whiff. I was gonna get the original one but that that's not personal to me, I don't really care. It smells like weird. Someone actually my um someone whose car used to go in a lot when I was a kid, his his car, it used to smell like, it used to smell like this, but the, he never had his air conditioning on, he never put his blowers on, he never had his windows down. So it was this, but this to me, I smell it and I instantly start sweating. Don't know why, like, but yeah, that, it's just one of them things, I guess. So I hope you enjoyed this. It's just sort of a trip down memory lane, if you will. That, um, the orange air freshener is, Smelling a bit, I guess. I'm gonna try attack this a bit more. There we go. That is really strong. That smells like that smells like the Cleethorpe's toilets. That smells like Cleethorpe's toilets. That is a really weird smell. I wouldn't. I'm not buying one of these again. But yeah, thank you for watching. Um, remember to subscribe. 
probably a new episode of this every two weeks i guess next time i want to look at a laguna splitter so if you have a laguna splitter let me know and i'll come and step a point at your car and talk at you for a few minutes for a video so thank you for watching keep watching remember to subscribe and this isn't very good it smells like cleethorpe's public toilets cheers guys